Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the F1 23 driver career mode where we don't penalize a driver for the car behind him wrecking himself on the final lap of the Australian Grand Prix. I hope you're all having a great day. We had some big news coming into this episode. Regulation changes coming to the aero department and what we expected the powertrain department as well. But we had so many resource points that we were able to adapt every single part, just like every team basically is going to be able to do. We have a couple component changes coming into this episode, fresh off of two back-to-back -back wins in Italy and a dramatic end of the Singapore Grand Prix where we saw some drama between Jackson and Albon as well. And coming in to this Miami Grand Prix weekend, we had some big news to share from Red Bull Ford, and that is the new engine supplier and partner going forward is of course we know Red Bull leaving Ford at the end of the season. They would announce this weekend Red Bull will be partnering with Audi. Audi is officially here and now Red Bull will be known as the Red Bull Audi F1 team and the question is do we remain with this team making the change? We've had lots of success with Red Bull but we have this whole tenure that we've been uh, you know with the team we have just kind of had these reliability issues in the back that have always kept us from being able to make that final push for a championship uh you know so we got to pay attention there's there's things developing at mclaren a bit of a rivalry between albon uh, as well as aiden jackson and jackson's quest to win the championship mclaren's car has been unbelievably reliable uh and and i'm just gonna spill the beans right here my goal is to get on the phone or at least in contact with Zach Brown uh, going into Circuit of the Americas next episode because although, you know, Red Bull's making a big change, which I wanted, there's still been too many reliability issues in the back of my head. I've been committed to Red Bull now for three seasons, but things are kind of starting to change. The cracks are starting to, you know, force that wall open. Obviously, we can't change anything for the rest of the season. The quest continues to try and win our first world championship. Uh, but, you know, today is the goal is, is to win again. Get the three-peat, get through qualifying into Q3 as well. Um, and hopefully, like I said, get that third consecutive victory to get ourselves right in the thick of this championship battle. My first lap in Q2, a bit sloppy. Only ended up P11, so I was forced into making a second lap where I didn't really find a whole lot of improvement in the first half of the lap. Uh, but I would find a fair amount here in the last half half of the lap basically now as we kind of head through like the more stadium-esque session we've run about three tenths of a second which is enough to put us into the top 10 uh, actually p7 as out leclerc how about jamie chadwick into p9 she was able to knock out the track house driver doing vips sato and ghastly all out in q2 now to q3 my first lap i threw away immediately i i locked up got the left sides on the paint there and that was it so we come in and basically throw a new set of softs on and go for it here now we have enough time for two laps if we need right at the end of the session right now it was Drogovic on pole position Chadwick was able to beat George Russell there so she's up in currently P8 likely going to be P9 if I can put even just a decent lap together I reckon and that's exactly what I was doing it wasn't great wasn't flashy it was just good uh, so that should give us a decent position but as well like I mentioned we have enough time to put two laps on the board so there is some potential right here as we come through the chicane and yeah overall I was relatively happy right until right here I kind of yeah miss the apex just a tad bit have a poor exit so I knew immediately I could gain more time in that corner specifically maybe even a full tenth to two tenths so we cross the line and go p6 not that bad compared to some of our recent qualifying efforts but I knew I could do better specifically in that one corner if we can run the same lap and then just find improvement there I mean who knows uh, what could happen and that's exactly what I did I ran in virtually the same lap right here through the chicane we find a tenth and then here we go through the left hander there's another two Two tenths of a second gain just about down towards the final couple of corners the heavy braking zone for the final time three tenths three and a half nearly four tenths gain as we head to the line what's it going to be is it going to be pole position like Singapore not quite Drogovic ends up pole but it's a front row lockout for Red Bull Racing as we go P2 Piastri third Jackson our championship threat knocked down to fourth let's hopefully get off the grid one two with Red Bull and make some headway Florida is no stranger to world-class sports, and as of 2022, the USA's Sunshine State is now on the F1 calendar. Welcome back to the Magic City for the Miami Grand Prix. With great opportunities for wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles featuring 19 corners, 3.36 miles long, and expected average speeds of 138 miles an hour, the Miami International Autodrome will be sure to create lots of chances to overtake. 
So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Felipe Drogovic lines up on pole position and Golden Boy completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Oscar Piastri, Jackson, Albon, Norris, Chadwick, Russell, Leclerc, Dewan, Yuri Vips, Sato, Gasly, Mayer, Joe, Vesti, Liam Lawson, Hamilton, Sonoda, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race. But before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. We're ready to roll here from the Miami Grand Prix row number one as we're going to be doing the usual softs to mediums. Let's get ready to roll for the formation lap here in Miami. Here we go then. The formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. Nearly everybody on softs except for Norris, Lawson, as well as Sonoda. Both Ferraris take a grid drop, moving Chadwick up to P7. So as all the cars reform the grids, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start. They'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers, ensuring the planned strategies are all in place. OK, mate, remember to work as a team here, but try to get the lead into Turn 1 if you can. Yeah, 10-4. Uh, let's have a good one, guys. We're ready to roll here. Now fresh off the announcement, Red Bull switching over to Audi power next season. I already know what the livery looks like and it's going to look radically different than the typical Red Bull livery. But fresh off that news, we make it a front row lockout. It's a last row lockout for that BMW team. Of course, we know they're expanding next season. They'll have their own team, but as well, they'll be partnered with Andretti and Fernando Alonso as a team principal announced the last episode in Singapore. Here we go, ready to go in Miami. It's going to be a long hold, but it's lights out and it's a good start for both myself and Dragovic, we can't really put the attack to him. He covers to the right side into turn number one. Piastri third, Albon fourth, Jamie Chadwick going for fifth on Aiden Jackson, who's dropped from that fourth starting position. That's perfect for us, obviously. He's in a bit of a tussle with Chadwick right now, but it looks like he's going to get P5 out of it now. As you can see, Albon settles in there just behind Leclerc, or Piastri, sorry, for fourth place. And how about Jamie Chadwick getting the elbows out right there, staying ahead of George Russell in that Connor Sport McLaren car. Love to see it now as she is continuing to try and prove her case, you know, for a full-time F1 gig next season as, you know, signs kind of point towards Callie Mayer likely being, you know, in the Ferrari seat, but we still don't know who's going to be in the other Ferrari. We now know both Hamilton and Verstappen off the grid next season at Ferrari, so it does look like Mayer gets one seat. Who gets the second one that is still completely up in the air but I've got my eyes on the McLaren situation that's really what we need to be uh paying attention to here now as we continue on trying to stick with my teammate at the end of lap one Felipe Drogovic putting up a great pace in qualifying a great start he seems to be firing on all cylinders it's been a while since he'd gone to the stop, top step of the podium of course he won race number two of the season all the way back in Austria and we haven't seen him win since although he has still been able to continue some consistency uh, as well as find success just not quite enough and hasn't had just quite enough consistency to stick with the McLarens uh, you know specifically of course Aiden Jackson but I was struggling early on I was losing time to Drogovic now he's over a second ahead as we start lap three you can see me dealing with a little bit of oversteer as well but this is my bread and butter section of the circuit I was gaining magnitudes of time several tenths of a second right here now so I was able to get a good three to four tenths on a good lap through that end sector two uh, section of the circuit uh, 
Uh, and fortunately for me, as we actually hold on, we have a crash here starting lap number five, and that's Frederick Vesti. This is going to bring out a safety car due to how long he was stationary. He loses it all by himself in the final breaking corner on the circuit, and the Andretti machine of Gasly gets some contact as well, so an early safety car which isn't really going to change a whole lot. When you get a safety car early, it doesn't really spice things up too much other than just, of course, freezing the field, bringing them back together. Uh, so we'll line up behind Drogovic for, uh, of course, a restart here coming towards the end of lap seven. Do you got anything for Felipe here? Not even close, dude. I'm just hoping he burned his tires up there. You hear that right there, my response to Mark asking if I have anything for Drogovic, and that's the thing, this safety car kind of resets things. Maybe Drogovic was pushing a little bit there on those tires when he was opening up the gap to a good two seconds, but we were driving away from the cars from behind. I mean, in Singapore, we dominated that race. We were the quickest car there, uh, but we're as well seeing today, the Red Bull has the power to just right now put a gap to McLaren, who just doesn't seem to quite have it as we're back underway. And my proof and, and evidence that McLaren isn't quite where they were just even a couple episodes ago is Jackson. In that whole, uh, you know, situation of going all the way from lap 1 to 7, or lap, well, end of lap 4 for the safety car, he was not able to pass Oscar Piastri in the Trackhouse machine, which has been, uh, you know, proven at times to be slower than not only McLaren, but my uh, Red Bull as well, and, and other teams. So, right now, McLaren maybe just kind of missing the ball here tonight, or today, in Miami. But look at this here now. You can see that rear end of Felipe Drogovic's car slipping and sliding around a little bit. We were not seeing that before the safety car. Did he spend those opening laps maybe pushing a little bit too hard and he's already starting to have that tire fall off especially on the rears it certainly seemed like it as we come to the end of lap eight right now both myself and Drogovic putting nine tenths of a second on Albon Jackson four tenths behind about three tenths behind Oscar Piastri still struggling to find a way there past uh, the Australian now uh, as we continue towards about midway through lap nine you can see it again that rear end slipping and sliding around it's not anything significant but it's at least significant enough uh, to keep me right on the back of Drogovic, which was, which was something I couldn't do before the safety car. DRS, once again, enabled the gap staying right about a second to Albon, so he's kind of flirting a little bit with staying in the DRS as I'm starting to slip and slide around a little bit there. A bit of a big moment from myself, and again, immediately to follow another moment on the wheel, and that opened the door for Albon to close up the gap to within half a second, and Drogovic to open up the gap to me, so not exactly what we were looking for. Fortunately, I was barely able to get back into the DRS range through that, uh, I'm calling it the stadium section, uh, and that was allowing me to, of course, get a bit more comfortable again uh, as we try to focus in on closing in on Drogovic now. Couldn't do it here, no DRS again, uh, but as we come through towards halfway through lap 11, and you can see again just through this chicane, I don't know why I'm calling it a stadium, let's just call it the underpass because there's, of course, a, a highway over above us now, but we were starting to get a little bit closer again as you see me going a little bit deep into the corner look at the leaderboard Jackson again going for an overtake on Piastri but Albon has joined the party with me putting some pressure on us Jackson would officially get the overtake done for fourth lap 12 2.7 seconds back what is he going to be able to do can he eat in to the gap we're trying to work as a team here with Red Bull but it was not even forced. I didn't have enough pace to get to Drogovic and even make a move if I wanted to. He just had enough to stay ahead. Starting lap 13, Albon's going to come into the pits. My pit window was opening on lap 13, so I was not quite expecting to see him come in. But he's done this before where he'll pit a lap early. Sometimes he puts on the hard compound tire from the softs. This time he's going to go on to the medium. So this is probably going to get him out in front of us. But we will be coming into the pits at the end of this next lap. We have to act on it immediately but that was already the plan to pit anyways at the end of lap 13 how about jamie chadwick running a net p6 right now currently p5 due to the albon pit stop a great run uh, for Chadwick in that Connor Sport McLaren. We stick with Drogovic, but still not close enough to make a move, but that's okay. We're going to pit, and this is exactly how we're going to be able to make a potential overtake on our teammate from Brazil, is by pitting a lap earlier than him. Jackson's going to follow us in. Piastri is going to stay on the racetrack. Russell coming in as well. We get those softs off, put on a fresh set of medium compound tires. We'll come out comfortably ahead of Aiden Jackson. The question is, where are we going to come out in relation to Alex Albon? Let's find out now as we look over on the racetrack here it's close we're gonna go around the shorter corner of course compared to Albon but he's ahead there he is right there just a few car lengths but he's gonna really be able to open up that gap due to the fact that we are of course on a cold set of mediums really have to get them warmed up here and look at that over a second between himself and I but hold on a second 
He's up behind the rear wing of Esteban Ocon in a significantly slower BMW. And here we go. This is exactly what we needed. Now, Albon going for a move nearly contact down the straightaway with the DRS on Ocon. He falls back in line behind. Look at the run we have. Over 225 miles per hour. Ocon throws a defensive move. We're three wide with Albon and Ocon. We sandwich together. We'll have to go around the outside. A bit of contact right there with the BMW. We go wide again. Albon through. We get through on Esteban Ocon. So we don't quite pass Albon, but we get past one of the ons, I guess. Uh, but we at least have closed the gap significantly to the McLaren. Aaron, our teammate of Dragovic into the pit lane now. Look at the move from Albon up the inside sneakily there on Gasly in the Andretti Cadillac. We know Andretti going to BMW power next season already after just one season with Cadillac. It hasn't quite gone to plan. We'll use the DRS to get past Dragovic, Piastri both exiting the pit lane now. I think we're in perfect shape and you can see Gasly tries to keep it up my inside. There's Dragovic on our radar. We get ahead of him and the engine's failed. The engine has failed again this season in a crucial point in the championship fight. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Thank you, Ford. Thank you. I can't wait for you guys to leave. And that's all I have to say on the radio. That's that's a huge shot. Um, my goodness. We had a parts change this episode, but we also changed components last episode, uh, and we didn't see any failure there. Is it a glitch? I don't know. But, oh, good heavens. The Lamborghini team has won the Grand Prix here in Miami. I have no idea who. We're going to find out. It's Joe Guan Yu that's won the Miami Grand Prix. We have seen sometimes the retirements. The simulation goes wild. We saw it in uh, Qatar last season where we had the Connor Sport driver of Jack Doohan win and, and Cali Mayer at the time get the podium. And now it's Lamborghini. And I think I saw an Andretti car there on the podium as well. And, and no sign of a McLaren on the podium. But I did see a McLaren in the background. Zhou Guan Yu is officially a Formula One Grand Prix winner. Oh my goodness, Lamborghini has gotten their first win in their return to Formula One. And that's Pierre Gasly joining him in the Andretti colors on the podium with George Russell in the Monster Energy. Of course, Mercedes colors on the fire suit on the podium as well. I mean, all of that heartbreak just went to almost humor. Uh, but we still have to be, you know, looking at the reality of the situation as we see the joy in Zhou Guan Yu's face there off of his first win. I mean, the championship fight. What's the situation there? Where did Aiden Jackson finish? Where did Drogovic finish as well? Albon, those three specifically. Let's take a look uh, at the damage done. And it's not great. And Drogovic, fifth, but Aiden Jackson still manages fourth while Albon ends up P6. Vesti and Vips both in the points. Uh, Jamie Chadwick looks like she got screwed over by the simulation down to 16th after having a top six, top seven run. But here's the real damage. 44 points again behind. So we're in a better spot than we were a few episodes ago, but we lose points today to Aiden Jackson. It's not as bad as it could have been. And we're three back again in the constructors it's time to get on the phone uh with our agent going into next season or in the next episode which we'll have a conversation soon i'll see you guys next episode in coda thank you for watching have a great day